Please welcome back the writer director of RAF, Harry Chepka. Hi. Um, I'd like to uh, call up a few uh, people who worked on the film. Um, everybody just come on up and I'll introduce you. <laughs> come on up. Okay, there's Grace Glowicki, the, the stuff. Uh, Jesse Stanley. And that's KCMQ, the uh, composer of the film. Blair McClendon, editor. Sarah Blake, producer and Charlotte Wells, producer. Harry, uh, okay, so you and Grace have been pals for a little bit, and I know that you guys worked on this together. Yep. Can you talk about the collaboration process and uh, really the inspiration for the story? Um, yeah, uh, the collaboration goes way back. Um, we, we didn't know each other very well when we decided to move into a basement apartment together near Kensington Market um, <laughs> in Toronto. So um, we both wanted to get into filmmaking, but we, we really didn't know how. So we started with kind of online comedy sketches. Um, so we would make these kind of, oh, okay. we would make these YouTube videos. Is that better? Okay. And we'd put them online and hope people gave us hits. And we'd live and die by the hits. Uh, <laughs> Um, and so that was kind of the, the origin of our collaboration. Um, and some of those skits made it into the film, such as uh, Bodine, Skater Boy. Not, Doug hasn't been made yet, but uh, yeah, so it started there. Um, and then as for the story, um, I mean, it actually started with casting because uh, Jesse is also a really good friend of mine um, and, and an amazing actor. And so I knew that I had these two good friends who would be in something that I would make. And, and that's kind of like, I, I wanted to write something for them. Um, and the thing that I kind of wanted to start with was sort of um, power relations in friendship. So um, I wanted to kind of explore what happens when two people who have obvious kind of social chemistry um, make friends, but they are of different you know, economic statuses uh, or class status, and then how that power dynamic unfolds and what happens. Um, the chemistry on screen between Grace and Jesse, I mean, very felt very authentic, uh, very nuanced as well. I'm wondering if you can talk about your preparation process. Did the two of you get together? Uh, was there a rehearsal involved? I know this must have been a quick shoot for you. Yeah, we shot it in 12 days. <laughs> Do you, do you well, want to speak first? We kind of just like lit. We all were all living in Harry's parents' house, so the and like they, I, they I were wasn't. making us food. Oh yeah, you weren't. You were at I your had house. My own place. Yeah, <laughs> it felt like we were all together, but but we were like in it together. So I think the chemistry, like we already had chemistry as friends from before, but um, <laughs> but um, um, uh, oh, I'm blanking now. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah. So we all hung out the whole time, and the chemistry came from like making a movie in twelve days and not having uh, much. Yeah, we both felt like we were losing our genuinely losing our minds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, one of the thing, the, one of the connection points for me is that a lot of other film. There's so many films about friendship, buddy comedies, whatsoever. But and a lot of films would you know have the friends coming back together there'd be a reclamation but this here um really reminded me of something authentic where a true connection that happens very fast can disintegrate and you left it at that point i'm wondering if you can talk about um the creative decision and the writing process there um yeah that's a great question um i i mean it was intuitive it just felt like um i always wanted to make comedies but at the same time i I never felt like uh, I I liked the comedy and gesture, but I I wasn't always a fan of like how things would just always wrap up. Um, it's like I didn't believe it sometimes. So I wanted to play with kind of mixing comedy and and drama, or doing like a tragic comedy, or you know just kind of playing with genre a little bit. Um, and so I, I guess I was more interested in the problem than the solution or something like that. And I know comedy can kind of bring you back into an ironic reconciliation or something. But this one, I don't know, I just felt like 
there was no way for these two people to reconcile after this because it was so kind of chemical as opposed to it, it's like an unhealthy friendship you know and and yeah i was just more interested in the problem than the a solution uh we'll take a couple of questions from the audience yes go ahead Uh, can you talk about the Shakespearean monologue and was there some foreshadowing involved? Any thoughts? Oh. I don't think we thought as far as foreshadowing, to be honest. It sort of works in the end. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I understand what I, what I was saying because I have done the monologue for real before. But then we just decided to do like a completely over-the-top version that Tao would have felt was really sumptuous. I mean... Um, Oh, I, no, no, no please. Um, I mean, one of the things was that I knew that I knew Jesse knew at least a couple of Shakespeare monologues at some point. So I, I asked her, okay, do we have some monologues that you could do? And one of the reasons was, you know, Tal Tal is kind of, you know, from the upper crust. So um, I wanted to contrast kind of like uh, Raff's sort of homegrown comedy with Tal's, you know. Uh, kind of more educated performativity. Um, and, you know, King Lear is a good one because, yeah, it's got some evil daughters who want to divide up some land. And and so it was, it was, <laughs> Jesse brought Regan, but <laughs> I thought it was appropriate for the, for the story. Uh, I want to ask about Raph's homegrown comedy. <laughs> and was that, how much of that was you, Grace, improvisation or, you know, coming from, from you? Or how much of that was Harry? Well, I always said to Harry, like, Raph is Harry. <laughs> and, like, I very, and it really is. Like, so because I know my friend so well, I just was playing Harry the whole time. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not sure I always knew this. But <laughs> yeah, he, he, I don't think he really knew. But um, I've just, like, because we've been roommates, we've been friends for like a decade or something now. So I've observed him and feel like I really know the comedy of his essence. So the whole time I was just pretending I was Harry and trying, <laughs> and also like trying to make Harry laugh. Like he has a very specific sense of humor. And I, and I was always just <laughs> trying to stay connected to Harry and right. make him get go. But a lot of those characters are from like our roommate days when he would just film me doing characters. And he was really like one of the first guys that really encouraged me to perform in a little more of an exaggerated comedic character style. So it's really, it really feels like it's born from our friendship. Okay. I was gonna ask who the comedic influences were of the character, but I guess we already know that. <laughs> um, questions? Yeah, in the back. Uh, you. No, you. Yes. Can you talk about your influences and any points of reference while you were creating the script and story? Uh, yeah, good, uh, great question. Um, one of them, I mean, all kinds of things uh, from YouTube videos to whatever. But I'd say, like tonally, the last thing we were watching before making it was uh, Mauvais Song by or Bad Blood by Leos Carax. Um, he's someone. He's a you know French director who has played. Every shot is like a little bit of a game to him. Um, and he's he does these kind of ecstatic moments, these funny moments, these tragic moments, and he never really commits to one genre. And so I, I was really kind of taken by this fluid movement of tone. Um, so that was the most recent one that I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> Can you talk about the music in the film? Um, I guess part of Raph's character is kind of like, you know, an unfulfilled life. Um, and one of the things, one of her many, you know, facets was a kind of longing for, you know, a more glamorous life. And in Raph's case, it was inspired by boiler room videos. And 
and like this idea of being like a glamorous club kid somewhere, uh, somewhere else, somewhere far away from Vancouver, which, you know, um, Vancouver is so far west and, you know, far away from a lot of other cultural centers. So, um, yeah, the, the music was kind of just like a, it was an accent, you know, um, and yeah. Uh, questions. We got time for, I think, two more. Yes, go ahead. Can you talk about the choice of gender here in this friendship? Yeah. And also, who has the power in uh, this the friendship between you and uh, <laughs> Grace? Um, it really came from just personally, not, not my observation of female friendships, but really the fact that, um, as you know, um, I spent a lot of time in my 20s uh, hanging out with some really great actors, and most of them were women. Um, and so I, I got to know a lot of amazing female actors, and I was much more interested in kind of the nuances and complexities of, of the actors themselves. And so it was, it was really a matter of casting people I love and then finding the dynamic between them. But I really think that for me, the, my primary interest was a power dynamic that I think could be replicated in all identities. So I don't think it's exclusive to female friendships, and I don't think that I was trying to specifically represent female friendships, but use actors that I love and find kind of the problem in any friendship. One last question. Go ahead. Uh, can you tell us what the script looks like? Um, yeah, it, well, the script was, I think it was 70 pages, so it, it was not line for line. Um, one one uh, kind of interesting tidbit I can give you is that, for example, in the, in the sort of, uh, when Jesse's asking Grace all the questions in, in the basement, um, I just wrote, Tal asks Raf 100 questions, and then we just went for it. Um, and that scene gets sort of mirrored in uh, later when Scott also asks Raph a hundred questions. So that it's like was some evil family like, <laughs> <laughs> like initiation. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it was kind of like that. Um, there were lines, but we threw the lines out. Or I knew that the actors would be um, very good at improv, so I, I left those spaces shortened, and then and then we expanded from there. Harry, Grace, Jesse, the team of Wrath, thank you so much for bringing this film here. Everybody, please vote for the film when you leave the cinema. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course, thanks.